tools. They come in a number of designs. Uh, uh, some of them customize and program. They can customize the amount of speed that the power chair goes. Um, head controls, chin drives, breath controls. Um, Christopher Reeves, I believe, had the sip and puff chair where he would uh, like puff into it and it would make it go. So it, you might see those with um, the big power chairs. Uh, they'll have a straw that's very close to the mouth and that's what helps them get to and fro. <laughs> Charlie? Yeah, it looked like there was a bar and he would lean forward and that would mm -hmm. propel it and then he'd so lean he back and it would stop. Like that yes. That's what it looked like he was like leaning to get it to go. So. Yeah, he, he probably had like a big, um, you know, like a door handle mm -hmm. that you push onto yeah. like that, that. That's probably what he had, okay. he had there. <clears throat> um, but you have to assess to make sure that they are going to have the cognitive ability to, to use it and the and the physicality to do it. The motor planning is also a big factor too. Um, for a power chair, basically someone who has insufficient endurance um, and ability to propel, um, a progressive loss, obviously someone who has a spinal cord injury, um, a TBI, um, cerebral palsy, where they're not able to support themselves. Will it help them be able to have more independence? Like Josh, he got into that wheelchair and he was able to, you know, finish school <coughs> and drive a car. So that absolutely helped his um, functionality. Um, does the caregiver demonstrate responsibility for care and maintenance of the equipment? Obviously, these people aren't going to be able to take care of their chair, so they need someone that's going to be able to assist them with that. And then, um, is the home going to be accessible for a wheelchair? Is the home going to be accessible? So you need uh, wide doorways, right? 32 inches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the bathrooms, you want 32, any, any type of door, you want at least 32 inches. Um, you want to check the heights of the sink, heights of the countertops, are they going to be able to function? Um, then you, moving right along, there's a manual recline versus power recline versus tilt wheelchairs. Um, and um, for that, you want to have the patient be able, can the patient sit upright because of hip contractures, poor balance, or fatigue? Those would be the reasons why a tilt chair or tilt in space may be, may be used. Um, is caregiver available to assist with weight shifts and position changes? Um, again, the maintenance. maintenance. Maintenance is always going to be a factor with wheelchairs. Um, do they have potential to operate independently. Many spinal cord injury type um, patients need to do what we call pressure relief. Um, so this is actually the wheelchair is a part of them, right? Because they, they can't do anything without it. So educating the uh, patient on pressure relief is very important because it's going to prevent any kind of uh, pressure ulcers or wounds so you would want to teach them to bear weight down into their arms and kind of lift up if they can um, this is one like one of the first things i'll teach uh, a patient to do as far as if they're very weak and they're they can't get up out of the bed is um, just work on lifting their bottom up. It's a very simple task, but sometimes you just have to break things down into little, little steps. Okay, so even just like sliding your hips forward, that can be one little activity that you do with someone. Bearing weight down into your arms, try and lift up your bottom. It's a good um, arm strength on our too. So that could be another activity that you can do. 
how often is it the every two hour kind of thing? Or they just they, and they're, when, the when they're in the chair, it, mm -hmm. it, it, yes, they should be repositioning every two hours or doing some kind of pressure relief every two hours.